Hey guys, Scott here, and today we're taking a look at another setup prompted by a question from a customer. We had a customer who wanted to create an effect where a person in an escape room would have to touch a certain spot in order to keep a lamp on. So I wanted to just go quickly over the setup that we came up with here, and um, this is it. Let's go over a little bit about what we're seeing here. Uh, here on the left, we have 110 volt power because we are using a light that runs off of 110 volts. We're using a flex controller. This is a flex max, but you could also just use a standard flex. This just happens to be what we had for the demo today. We have a single relay board and we have a touch sensor. So here's the way this works. We have our relay attached to output one of our flex. We've created a program in Director, which we'll look at at the end of the video, which just turns output on in a momentary fashion when the touch sensor is pressed. What that means is that as long as somebody is interacting with the touch sensor, this relay will be turned on. And what that will do is touch the two wires together that are running here through the relay from the light to the AC power. We have uh, the wire split here. We have uh, two ends of the wire, one going into C and the other into NO on the relay. Meaning that when the relay activates and closes that circuit, touches those two wires back together, that completes our circuit, which will allow power to flow to the light. So here's how it works. If we touch the sensor, the light will come on. The light will stay on as long as we keep touching the sensor. As soon as we let go, the light will turn off. So the idea for this puzzle again was to have somebody having to hold a certain spot in a room to illuminate a different section so that one player has to stay in one area, the other player can't see unless they're touching that spot. Now this same setup could work for pretty much any AC device. If you wanted to turn on a strobe light or uh, some other type of lighting effect, um, you could do it that way. You could also do the same thing for a 12 volt or 24 volt DC device. You wouldn't need the relay in that case. You could power the device directly from the solid state outputs of the flex. So to make this work, we had to do um, some programming in Director, uh, just a little feature in there that's not too commonly used, um, that, which I thought would be interesting to demonstrate to show off this effect. So let's go over to the PC, we'll uh, take a look at our Director program to wrap things up and just show you quickly how we were able to do this with Director. Okay, here we are over at Director, and we're just going to create a new show uh, from scratch so that I can show you a little bit of how we created the show used in our demonstration. Uh, this is a screen you'll see when you first open Director. We're just going to click New Show and we're going to select the BooBox FlexMax. Uh, in the demonstration we were using a FlexMax, so that's what we're going to do here, but you could also use just a Flex. There's really no uh, reason to use a FlexMax for this simple setup. Uh, but that's what we had today, so that's what we're going to use. So we'll click FlexMax here and we will click Select. Uh, we already have a show uh, titled Untitled, but we'll just uh, overwrite that. That's just sort of our demo show here. And it's going to open Director, and um, this is a pretty simple uh, program, but it does use a feature that we don't talk about a lot, uh, so we're going to show that off. So here we are in our scene input 1-0, and as you may know, this scene is basically what's going to happen when somebody triggers the trigger that's connected to input 1. In our case, it's that touch sensor. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to create a five-second show and have input 1 be on at all times. If you haven't used Director before, uh, basically you just click uh, in the space to turn the input on and off on your timeline here. Uh, so the blue means the input's on, white space would mean it turns off. So if we were creating a blinking pattern, we could do something like that. We want to just fill the, the whole thing in, so we're just going to click and drag across the entire space so that this uh, show currently has output 1 being on for 5 seconds. Now we're going to go to our settings here in the top right. And this is where we're going to choose some of the options that make the momentary effect possible. The main one, of course, is under settings. There's a checkbox down here called momentary. And we're going to click that. And what that means is that uh, the input will function like a um, momentary switch, essentially meaning that it will only be on as long as the switch is being interfaced. So uh, the input will basically relate to the switch. When it's touched, it will be on. When it's let go, it will be off. And that's really the uh, secret sauce to this whole setup. Uh, we do want to change our after scene go to. We're just going to change it to ambient one because uh, we are going to create another scene for when the uh, control is basically in standby mode. So what we're going to do for that, we're just going to go up to the scene uh, selection here. We're going to go to ambient. 
zero, zero. And we're just going to create an empty looping scene. So I'm just going to drag the record bar out here to about five seconds. And I'm just going to not do anything here. So this is just sort of a standby mode. There won't be any animation happening. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, leave the after scene go to in our settings here as this scene. So basically this means this is just looping over and over again waiting to be interrupted by the trigger. You can see here it's currently interruptible by all eight of our trigger inputs. We're only using number one, but uh, that's fine. And so basically it'll sit here waiting until it gets a trigger input. Then it's going to switch to our scene number one, which is the momentary scene with our uh, basically five seconds. The, the time here really doesn't matter, but uh, the momentary input of the uh, trigger. Now you could do an effect like this several different ways, but one of the reasons that we would suggest using a flex is that you can actually create different cool effects with this. So you could add audio in your ambient mode, you could add some animation or audio cues that might uh, indicate you know, something to a player that they have to press a certain area. So using a flex just opens up some more options to you. Uh, you could probably just hack it together with a relay and create something that way, but it, it makes it a little bit easier to interface a switch like the touch switch with um, something like one of those lights and it also opens up some more opportunities for adding to your effect. Okay, so with the show done we just export to our SD card as normal, pop it out, put it in the uh, show controller and that's the effect. As always if you have any questions you can go ahead and leave a comment on this video or send us an email at sales at Thanks!